Um, okay, so let's get right to it. You know, one of the most common questions we get on the discussion group and other forums is, is questions from parents on how to deal with intrusions of religion in their public schools. Um, uh, I know when our kids were in public schools, uh, we leaned heavily on the Freedom From Religion Foundation. They were fantastic. Um, did any of you guys hear about the big to-do up in Prosper that the Oyakawa family was involved in? Um, Janie's going to talk about that today, and, and you know, this was a fantastic thing It was to, to see her family step up uh, like this in such a public way. Uh, they did catch a lot of flack for it, and it was fantastic to see them parlay this into such a fantastic outreach opportunity. They handled it with such grace um, and got a lot of great press for our community. Um, Janie, and I probably shouldn't tell this, but I'm going to tell it anyway, J Janie and I have this sort of arrangement. We, we don't wish any ill will on anyone, but, but should her husband and my wife pass away, <laughs> we will be a thing. So, uh, you may recognize the Oyakawas there, the first to come and the last to leave every single month at the gathering. Their contributions have been consistent over a number of years. Uh, Ella, their oldest daughter, is helping today with the kids, which she does every month. So. Um, thank you so much for the contributions of your family and Janie Oyakawa. All right. Did I do it right? Can y'all hear me okay? All right. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate the chance to talk about this. I didn't talk about it. Um, in this kind of forum right as it was going on because it was kind of intense but there has been some time since it's happened and um, it is a frequent question that comes up and I get a lot of private messages asking what should I do what should I do so I thought it would be a good topic I kind of want this to be a conversation so I suspect most of you are familiar with what all happened so I'm just going to kind of run through it quickly and um, then we can talk about what the ins and outs of what to do if you run into any similar situation. My overall message that I try to relay to people when they ask me direct questions about this situation is don't take any shit, but be nice. The law is on our side for separation of church and state until Trump and Pence have their way. But for right now, the law backs us up to stand our ground for there to be a separation in public schools. Um, but also, you're always going to end up being the face of, our, of the free thought movement if you take up this issue. So try to do it with as much tact and compassion as you can. That's my overall message. So So this was the beginning of the school year of 2015-16. Um, there was the See You at the Pole event, and See You at the Pole is legal, and that is okay. It is also garners the most attention from Freedom From Religion Foundation. It should be a student-led event, and so I don't really get involved or have any problems with it until this message popped up in the Prosper Mom group that I'm a part of. And it says, I, I hate to have PowerPoint that someone reads to you, but that might be kind of hard to see, so I'm going to read it. We are blessed to live in a Christian community. Of course, I wanted to be like, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> Where our students' leaders at school support the students' boldness and encourage them to reach out to others who may not be so bold, but wish to be. Mr. Wright, who was the principal is the principal of Prosper High School, is well known for his school spirit and getting students fired up for pep rallies, but he's a man of God who also has a mission to get them fired up for God. He's beginning an organization for students called First Priority on October 7th that will meet twice per month in the auditorium. They will sing, pray, and praise. It is like FCA, but I think that's Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Okay, um, But people tend to believe FCA is centered more to around athletes. So Mr. Wright wants, a student, wants students to feel welcomed at, at his first priority meetings. He said this morning, Christian faith is an active faith, and he's encouraging students to be proactive and make their daily walk with Christ a priority. See you at the flagpole was awesome. And there's a picture of him with the Bible open, with the microphone, um, which actually, if you notice all of the equipment in that little 
poorly taken cell phone picture, the first thing I thought was see you at the poll should be a student led activity and um, buses pull up with only adults setting up very expensive AV equipment for several well, I don't know, hours, but a lot of time before this event. So that right there is a good signal that it's not student led. So I'm the kind of person that I believe your first line of action should just be to go straight to the source. So I made a phone call to the principal. And I've said frequently, and I stand by it, if that phone call had gone relatively positive, I don't think anyone would have ever heard about this situation. But it didn't. <laughs> he basically said in so many words, calm down, little lady. And <laughs> I've been doing this for years. No one's ever complained before. I don't see why you have a problem with it. It was before school. And the kicker for me was, I have no intention of stopping what I'm doing, and this doesn't need to go past this phone call. So, all right. I wish I, if I could do anything over again that I had recorded that conversation, but I did not. It was not pretty. So, um, I went back into this mom's group, and for better or stupid, I kind of made a case of how this could be um, non-inclusive and um, a little overbearing to the population of the student body that's not Christian. And I really did feel like through all of this, I wasn't, as much as I love just representing us, I wasn't just representing the atheist community. There are many religions in Prosper. They, the majority might not like to recognize that, but not all the students there are Christian. Um, and so I was very concerned with the wording of the principal starting this club, especially, even more so than see you at the poll. My um, response in that group just drew tons of ire and anger towards me. And somewhere along the way, I got into it, like I tend to do, and um, I said... I, didn't even, I don't know how I worded it. I wish I could remember now. But I said something along the line of, this is technically even something that I could bring forward to Freedom From Religion Foundation. Well, I wasn't even in contact with them at the time, and I didn't even really know that I was going to do that. I was just making the case that technically, and I, I was, of course, showing sources and documentation of why this is not allowed, and it should just be students speaking, and I could even bring a complaint for it if I so chose to. And I went to bed. Well, when I woke up, there was a full movement starting in Prosper that some woman was going to some atheist organization to get the principal fired. And that got everyone riled up. And within a matter of 24 hours, they were planning a rally at the front steps of the school to support Principal Wright. And so the next day when my son got bus to school. He got bussed into a parking lot with an angry mob of more parents than students, all there to support the principal. That was crazy to me, and he went straight to the library and ended up kind of holding up in there, and I was out of town, so I had to get someone else to go pick him up because he was afraid to go to class. Um, it snowballed from there, more so that there ended up being a second rally <laughs> after that. And there's a lot of details in between, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. And um, they decided to have a wear white for Mr. Wright, so I decided to wear white today. Because <laughs> it's hard to really encapsulate what it's like for your kids to go to school when there's an angry mob of, mob of parents outside and uh, kids are wearing white to support the principal because some crazy lady wants to get him fired. And that was really so frustrating for me. But it ended up working out in our favor because it started to give me a voice. Their hostile reaction started to give us a voice in the situation. So I'm going to show a news clip if I can figure it out. Kyle's watching to see me screw it up. I did screw it up.
students this morning took part in a prayer rally outside of Collin County High School embroiled in controversy over religious freedom. Yeah, the high school principal talked about his Christian faith after students invited him to attend their Christian club meeting. But that caught the eye of some parents and even the National Religious Freedom Organization. And NBC 5's Jeff Smith is live from Prosper High School. To break this down for us, Jeff, what is this about? Well, Eric, a national group called the Freedom From Religion Foundation sent Prosper High School a letter saying it's against the law for administrators to lead students in prayer on campus. But many Christian students say that is not exactly how it happened. And today they say they feel like their religious freedom is under attack. That difference is Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Prosper Town Councilman Mike Corbelly led more than 100 Prosper High School students in prayer. Don't let anybody tell you you can't pray. While just a few miles away, Mother Janie Oyakawa sat in tears. It's just like a way to say, you're the out group. You don't belong here. And it's mean. <laughs> And if my children were the majority denomination, if we were, I would never let them treat other people that way. This all started last week. A new Christian student club called First Priority held a prayer rally at the flagpole. It was before school started. Students printed out the scriptures at home. But senior Maddie Ray asked Principal Greg Wright to attend. Any uh, organization or any club that asks Mr. Wright to show up or asks Mr. Wright to speak, he will do it because he's the biggest fan and the, big, the biggest advocate for anyone in the school. She says Principal Wright spoke about how his faith inspires him and what prayer means in his daily life. This, to me, is not a religious issue. It's a separation of church and state. He's afforded influence over those students because of his position with ISD. And even if the students aren't necessarily required to attend or attending, it's sending a message that not only am I Christian, I endorse this religion. Oyakawa complained online that this was inappropriate. A few days later, another prayer rally captured in this cell phone video. There, there are at least a dozen other families, including teachers, that have reached out to me and said, Thank you. Thank you. I am uncomfortable by this too, but I'm afraid to say anything. And they're right to be afraid. It has been pure backlash toward me. This morning service was not at the flagpole. It was just off school grounds. Parents said they saw teachers in attendance too. It's important for us as Christians to stand up. I feel like lately the minority is winning. The mood was upbeat. Students and town leaders say they're inclusive and judgment-free. I think that people realize that it's important to pray and get together. And it's different when you're by yourself and when you're together, um, just like the unity. But Janie's son doesn't feel that unity anymore. But I've got an angry glares down the hallway. I've heard people whispering about me. And it's just been unnerving the whole time. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel like I'm not part of the whole community. In fact, he decided to stay home from school today, worried he'd hear nasty insults or something worse. And we tried reaching out to uh, Principal Wright to get his take on all of this, but he is not in the office today. Ben Oyakawa told me that he has been hearing some words of encouragement from classmates and peers, and he says he is proud of his mother for speaking up. We're live in Prosper. Jeff Smith, NBC. What was that? Right? Okay. Um, kind of forgot where I was. I'm so proud of my kids. So um, I, I could like probably spend an hour just going through that video because <laughs> there's so much there. Like the part about that he's an advocate for all the students. No. Um, and that it was okay because the students asked him to do, to present, no. But um, the, the opportunistic nature of the politicians, the small town politicians in Prosper was especially noteworthy to me. I mean, it really got the city council fired up and they were out there, whereas usually they don't really get involved with that kind of stuff. But I think they really saw it as just political capital to look, you know, super extra Christian-y. 
because you can be extra Christian-y when you're angry. So, um, and I also find it interesting that it's, there's a lot of strength in praying in groups and less strength in just taking action to do good for the community sometimes. So, I want to kind of turn it to how I feel like we worked really hard to make it a good thing in the end. Um, I won't read this, but it's one of my favorite Bertrand Russell quotes, which the part I like is, love is wise and hatred is foolish. During this process, um, a pastor in Prosper reached out to me, and he called me, and I think I was in, I was overwhelmed because I had a little bit of attitude, and he was like, listen, this probably isn't good for a phone call. Will you meet me for coffee? And I said, sure. And we did. And I went and had coffee with him. And he listened to me. And it was so great. And he enjoyed our conversation so much that he invited a small group of influential people in Prosper to have a sit down with my family. And we did that at um, another pastor's house. Um, interestingly enough, the most opportunistic politicians did not decided not to attend the meeting, but the meeting was just so overwhelmingly positive, he invited us to come speak at his church. And I was a little hesitant, but I just wanted to have a voice at that point because everything I was saying, no matter how clearly I spoke, was being misconstrued by the community. They would not let go of the fact that I wanted to have the principal fired, which I had never said. I didn't want anyone fired. I didn't want anyone's head on a chopping block. I just wanted the law to be followed, but no one was listening to me. So we took him up on the opportunity, and I was warned heavily by fellow atheists that it was a landmine, that we were going to be trapped to not go. It was just going to be a chance to preach to us in public and try to make fools out of us. But you know, I'm not good at following advice, and so we went. I just, I did also have a lot of support of um, fellow free thinkers that also wanted to pick it and be there that morning to counteract that group that we just saw in the video. And at first, it was very appealing, and I wanted to start making signs right then. And then the more I thought about it, the more I thought about what the end result of doing that would be. Um, it would just be a pissing match over numbers, number one. And I didn't want to have, you know, 70 people say they'd come and seven show up. And in the end, I didn't want to be like them. I didn't want it to be anything but that. I was asking for a conversation. And so that's when I had that opportunity, I picked having a conversation over having a chance to protest. And so let me screw this up again. I'll just show a little bit of us. Um, I would, if you haven't got a chance to watch it already, not just to plug us, but we thought this was a really great opportunity. And he gave us the entirety of their church service that morning. Um, they said their devotional at the beginning and a short prayer at the end. And the rest of it was two atheists sitting up there talking. And despite any of that, I think that's pretty profound right there. Yes, this is Doug Chris from um, Prosper. I know, I was kind of sad. Uh, there was, was radio sad, silence. But, um, but let me, before, I think we, we've kind of come up with like a fun list of what some of those might be. But also, um, uh, just because you touched on it a little bit, and I want to just claim it out front, because when we met for the first time a couple weeks ago now, um, the thing that really, truly broke my heart was was that I never really thought about the atheist or the agnostic or the free thought community as being a group of people that are marginalized or are oppressed or um, there's a I'm trying to find the right word here but but they're they're, they're prejudiced against right. um, and I heard a handful of stories just could you give me like one or two examples about how you've seen that happen um, you know or in either in a big way or kind of a small way. Um, oh, <laughs> I mean, I imagine. Like, I don't want to get into like oppression Olympics kind of thing. Like, um, there's so many people that face prejudice, so prejudice. I don't want to feel. I don't want to give the impression like I feel like a woe is me, have pity on our family kind of thing. There are, um, you know, the queer community, uh, disabled community. There's racial stereotypes. There are all those issues that could probably be even more valid than the atheist plight necessarily, but. Um, if you are a believer, you can probably count on not causing silence in a crowd when you say that you're a believer. 
But if I say at Bunko night with people that don't know, oh, what church do you go to? Actually, I'm atheist. <sighs> like, you know, it's like powder's been thrown. And if you're a believer, I want you to know some. So I just liked that clip because I appreciated him even asking that question. And over our friendship and the continuation of that situation with Prosper, he's told me because he's been able to have the ear of the administration of the school that he said to them, well, there's a group here. There's a group of non-believers. And they go, no, it's just her. She's crazy. He's like, no, they have organizations and they have meetings and they do community service. No. And he's like really had to work hard before he can even whatever message we might have. Just that we freaking exist blows their mind and that we exist enough to know each other and that we are even here in some organized manner today blows their mind, which speaks so strongly to the amount of privilege that they have. And I do hope, like I said in the news clip, that if we ever get to that point where we hold that amount of privilege, that we're not like that, just that we're not like that. That's really what I would hope. But um, check out that video, and the comments are pretty interesting too. Um, that one's on YouTube, yes. Meet your atheist neighbor from Grace Church. Did I do it? Okay. Okay. So now, um, overview, sorry, end of that story. We won. Um, it went without particular fanfare, but that's okay. Um, on all four points raised by myself, our family represented from Freedom From Religion Foundation, which um, I don't remember exactly right off the top of my head, him preaching, him starting the club, um, uh, religious symbols in the principal's office, and one other thing, do you remember? Anyway, all four points, the legal firm for Prosper ISD agreed on all four points that they were out of line and would discontinue any of those actions going forward. So, yay, Freedom From Religion Foundation. Um, that didn't get any traction in the mom group, though, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, you know, no. Principal Wright, for what, for as much as I'm willing to put myself and my children out there, he has. He, um, I, I'm going to talk about my kids a little bit. I kind of posited to them if they wanted to maybe... Um, go in the back of the auditorium during one of these first club priority, first priority. God, I hate that freaking name. Can I just say that for a moment? I hate that it's first priority, that it's some notion that like if you're not Christian, you're missing the first priority in your life. Ugh. But um, that my children were not comfortable with that. And I wouldn't want a Christian parent sneaking in the back row of a secular student organization. So I thought if I wouldn't want that, I wouldn't do it to them either. So no one that I have felt comfortable representing us has attended one of those meetings where he could probably be preaching the whole time. But as far as announcements and further see you at the poll activities, he has not been using religious language and he did not, he was not at the see you at the poll this school year. So, yay, because I wish I could remind him of our phone call. <laughs> um, so... As far as the gray areas that will exist in our children's school systems, he still uses heavily preachy language. You know that language that just sounds like a preacher and it, everything gives you a boating sense of religion, but it, it never technically crosses the line. He does that all the time. But that's his, that's his speech, I guess. Um, services and resources for you. Hands down, this form, if you can read it, is the go-to. It is a position paper by the Texas Association of School Boards for religion in the public schools. It covers almost every area that will come up um, in schools. And 
Now, it is, of course, like most legal documents, going to have an asterisk at the bottom that it's not legal advice, so school boards will sometimes use this as a way to ignore it, but it is the organization of all Texas schools' position on religion in the public schools. So I'm just going to kind of hit the bullet points of it, because a lot of times there is confusion on what teachers and school employees can and cannot do. The two key phrases to remember for education, free and appropriate education. Every student is allowed a free and appropriate education. Sometimes that can involve discussing religious topics or a historical aspect of religion. That is not the same as promoting religion. In the aspect of promoting religion, that cannot be done while on duty. And this is where employees get super confused because everybody wanted to hang their hat on that see you at the poll happened before school hours. If you are in that position in any regard because of your job, you're on duty. If you're a coach and you're at Pizza Hut with your baseball team, even if you're off the clock and it's not a school hour, and school might not even be in session, you're in the summer, you were there because you were on duty, because that person has the audience of those students because of their position. You or I are not going to just get a group of 17-year-old boys together to talk about our religion. We're not going to be afforded that opportunity. That person is because of their position. So it doesn't matter if it's not school hours. If you are acting in any sense related to your position, you're on duty. And during that duty, you cannot be promoting religion. No public expressions of faith. No leading worship. No leading prayer. This is a big kicker. Even if asked, even if a teacher is asked by a student, what church do you go to, Miss Smith? Do you believe in God, Mr. So-and-so? The teacher is supposed, teacher or employee, is supposed to deflect, to go away from that. Well, that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about science. We're talking about this. We're talking about that. You know, like, oh, that's of no concern. You know, that, that's what they're supposed to do. Do they do that? Never. But that is, that is what the law is. Um, religious decorations. Religious decorations, I wish that people just had like an ounce of compassion, could just think that if I plaster 30 um, fancy crosses on my wall, will an LGBT student feel comfortable talking about being bullied by Christians in my office? Like I wish that people could just put themselves outside of themselves for a moment, but they don't. The rules for religious de decorations, they can be for the edification of the person, which in short means if it's on their desk, and they're, it's facing out, it's not edifying them. They're then advertising. So towards you, personal, facing out, that's related to your duty. And so anything that is going to be facing outward or decorating the schools needs to represent the um, goals of the district, which would be free and appropriate education. So that doesn't apply toward the free and appropriate education. Personal dress. That's a really big gray area because there have been some cases where teachers have worn Jesus is the reason for the season shirts, and um, those have been deemed inappropriate and not allowed. But small, unassuming crosses can be worn in jewelry. And then you have the issue of people wearing hijabs or yarmulkes. And um, it kind of falls into the same area of edification for the, purpose, for the person. Um, if someone has taken covenants for the clothing that they wear and it's not going to inhibit their ability to offer free and appropriate education they can wear those religious symbols but something like a t-shirt about Jesus probably isn't something they took a covenant to wear to edify themselves so um, as far as what teachers can be required to do by the schools they are required to teach the curriculum even if it contradicts their religious and personal beliefs so if it is the approved curriculum of the school, they have to teach evolution. They do. Now, it doesn't mean they can't pepper it with doubt in their tone, but that's something that's you know, hard to put a finger on. But if you can have evidence through slides or notes or worksheets that they are contradicting the body of evidence in the curriculum, then that's a no-no.
Now, when it happens, because it's going to happen, don't be a dick. Just don't be a jerk. If you have the courage to address the issues, anger will be on your side, I promise you. When you find out that your students, your child has been taught evolution from Answers in Genesis, you're going to be pissed. Try to um, temper that and have some compassion. Um, in other words, don't call the principal at 10 o'clock at night because they're not going to be on your side. Um, don't demand a meeting within the next 24 hours because they have seven special ed meetings they might have to do that day. So just put yourself in the shoes of the administrators. There's some schools where they are struggling to find teachers. And I know you want that science teacher fired five days ago, but if they do that, those kids will have 17 shitty substitute teachers for the rest of the school year. So be aware of what the law is and what is also reasonable for your situation. Okay, so that leads me to, this is a very common Mormon phrase when you're in Mormonism, every member is a missionary. And technically speaking, if you, need, if you speak up and address these things publicly, you are going to represent atheism. You just are. I wish that there was a way to avoid that, but you are. So, like I said before, if at all possible, go directly to the source of the problem. Um, if you work in any job in customer service and teaching is customer service, you know what it's like when someone just goes straight to your boss before asking, hey, why did you do such and such? And I know you love your babies. I know you love them so much, but sometimes they're going to tell you stuff, and when you find out what actually happened, it's not going to be like your baby told you. <laughs> so if you can, just talk to the person that has caused the problem and see what happens. There might be another side to the story. They might not realize. They might be willing to hear your point of view. When we did that atheist in church, the very first school event after that, I was like, oh, this is going to be terrible. I could barely get down the hallway to my kid's room at the end of the hallway because I had like four teachers stop me. Oh, my God. And, of course, they're whispering because it's very subversive to talk about it. But I watched the whole video. I understand you guys so much better now. I really appreciated it. Like, there's value in having these discussions as a conversation instead of just a, I got you, you broke the law, you need to be fired. Um, follow the chain of command. If it doesn't go well with the person you have a conversation with, um, you know, don't show up at the school board because they're not ready for that. Try to go through um, the chain of command. Document everything. Document everything. If you can, get tech savvy enough to record conversations that you have. Be nice, but record. Um, after you've done all that, then contact Freedom From Religion Foundation. Freedom From Religion Foundation, I cannot sing their praises enough. They are overworked. Like, this is just kind of a constant in, in our government that there's these boundary blurs. Um, think about being a member of them before you contact them. If you support their goals and you have the means, go be a member today. Don't just be, you know, shooting them emails when something has happened to you. They have a very worthwhile cause and they need our support. Um, they are going to be overworked at the beginning of school years. There's all kinds of situations, especially see you at the poll. You can be anonymous. So you can ignore everything I just said and you can choose to be anonymous. Um, I've actually had three situations with Prosper. This is the only one that was well known. The other situation I had was at the end of the school year last year, my um, little girl who's in second grade, her teacher was the wife of a very prominent pastor in Prosper, not one that would come to the meeting and have a discussion. So very close-minded but prominent pastor. And um, at the very last day of school, we did the little picnic, and I dropped her back off in the classroom to pick up her stuff. The teacher pulled me in the hallway and was like, by the way, I just wanted to let you know, I give the kids a gift at the end of the school year, and I've been doing it the whole time I've been a teacher. And it's a CD of praise and worship music recorded professionally by my husband. 
And I didn't know if he wanted me to give Cora something else. And I was just really like, what? Number one, I was like, what in a million years do you think second graders want to listen to praise music, even if they're religious? And I was like, um, yeah, sh like, I didn't even, I was just so, like, processing it. I was like, yeah, sure, that'll be fine. And as I walked out, I was like, no, no, it won't be fine, because I don't want Cora to see everybody else getting some glittery CD, and she gets, like, a lollipop. Like, that's not right to her either, and I don't want her to get at the CD and be confused, but I was just, so I just immediately emailed the teacher and said, actually, I have a problem with that, but we were in the final hour. Like, that was the day before the last day of school. So I did call the principal and I said, just so you know, I would like to have this conversation with the teacher, but because we're running out of time, she's already left for the day and I'm sure she's going to burn these CDs as we speak. Um, you might want to know she's doing this and she's been doing it for years, apparently. And the principal said, that is absolutely inappropriate. I will take care of it. And it was taken care of. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't do anything past that. And I don't know if she was upset or what, but, um, it was just handled. So the other situation was we had a ribbon cutting ceremony at the beginning of this year. And we went and it was a school sponsored event organized by the school and listed on the program was a uh, prayer. And I noticed it was actually one of the more open minded pastors that had come to that meeting and met our family. And he was going to be giving a prayer. And I was like, OK, well, I'll just have an open mind that maybe he will say a prayer that's inclusive of all religions, just a very generic higher power. Let's educate our kids well. And um, I noticed there were women wearing hijabs in the audience. So I thought, okay, he has a physical representation that not everyone here is Christian. And he sees me here and he knows. No, it was full on Christian prayer. So I decided to go anonymously through FFRF for that one because that was not technically an employee and it was kind of dealing with the whole school that had organized the event. I went anonymously and about four months later they sent a letter to the law firm for the ISD with all the details of that and reminding them that that does not abide by the law. So, and that was the end of that situation. So you have options, you can be anonymous, which will probably lead to, oh, this is a, the letter that they sent. The big question, so what will happen to your children if you do this? And this will be my last point. Number one, I don't know. I don't know. But all the time is this is not getting addressed because parents have that fear, and it's a valid fear. But for our particular situation, even with all that you saw in the news clip, I've had long conversations with my kid, kids, and I just repeated that conversation while I was preparing this. And my children said it's been overwhelmingly positive. The jerk kids were more jerky, but the other kids understood them so much better. And in the end, just like I think we kind of got from the kids in the Camp Quest video, kids just want to be understood. They're overlooked and bulldozed all the time. And in just snippets of little conversations, friends might know that they didn't go to church or they weren't Mormon anymore or they didn't really believe in God. But it wasn't until they had a voice that they started to get understood. There was not any backlash from any individual teachers. There was private conversations with some of their teachers that were like, I'm so grateful for you guys doing this because I can't say anything because I'm an employee. And my kids found more free thinking kids in the school and it increased their respect from their peers and their friendships. So it was overwhelmingly positive. And that's about it. Any questions? Do you like